Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 12. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was one of the best episodes of the season. It was definitely the most fun, along with the Chester and Cisco episode a while back. I had such a great time, and this was such a fun, great way for Cisco to go out. And although he is coming back, this was like his main goodbye kind of scene. Well, I mean, it's pretty much the whole episode is about that surrounding like a bunch of different circumstances it's all about cisco actually leaving and moving on and also a little bit to do with camilla but mainly cisco because cisco is an og team flash member and so it was fantastic i'm looking forward to seeing him in the penultimate episode the 150th episode which is episode 17 it's also going to be in episode 18 the finale so get excited for cisco to return in literally not very long so don't worry about that but for now, let's talk about this episode starting chronologically. Cisco is moving to Star City to join Argus. So it's revealed this is his job that he's got and he is using his skills to get this really cool new job. And so moving to Star City, obviously that is Arrow City. I think that is a very cool place to move because it's not that far away and like the Flash can easily run there. So if they want him back technically in the fictional world he's actually not super far away i know it's a bit far away because we don't know the exact dimensions but it does take a while by car or something like that but the flash is the flash and he can easily get there so no problem about that but it's just nice for us fans to know he's going to a familiar city okay so he's still gonna be around like i said for the final two episodes but it's super awkward at the start with Team Flash as they're being told about Cisco leaving and Barry picks up all of Cisco's stuff and he puts it all in boxes and this is very surprising and a bit off for Cisco. He doesn't kind of know what's going on. He thinks that Team Flash, like Barry and Caitlin specifically, don't care about him leaving and so he's trying to get all of this attention throughout the episode. But obviously it turns out that it's part of their plan that they kind of agreed because it was like such a shock and they didn't have time to process it that they would try and put on like a brave act for Cisco so he didn't like want to stay behind basically. Okay, so Cisco passes on the mantle of Cisco, I guess, to Chester and he shows the inventory room to Chester full of loads of old items that he has used in the past on major team flash missions. Obviously there's a lot of cameos in there. You can see in the background there is some flash suits. I believe Jesse Quick suit is also there, which is interesting. But anyway, it's an old rack. And this is probably a actual rack from like the costume department of the Flash where they've just like brought out like a bunch of their old suits. And also they've raided the closet. They put like loads of old props in this new mysterious room. And so Chester is like freaking out over all of this. I think as we all would do. But anyway, so Caitlyn is not sad apparently. Even though this doesn't turn out to be true, you kind of know something is off, like this isn't the way that Caitlyn would react. And we know as Flash fans and having watched the show since the start of season one, we know how these characters interact and sort of feel. So there was 100% something off which is revealed later, but Caitlyn asked for his ID badge and access codes, and I was like, oh my god, Jesus Christ, Caitlyn. That's pretty damn harsh, and it was super awkward, and this is where we get to meet the new Rainbow Raider, so cutting out to Central City in this kind of bank place. Rainbow Raider, this new version of her, is in a literal rainbow coat, and I guess that's a bit on the nose, but she was fine and like she's acceptable, but was definitely the most forgettable thing about this episode. And so she has the ability to manipulate people, but like in the opposite way to the old Rainbow Raider. And so just after this, OG Team Flash find out about the new Rainbow Raider, and Cisco at this point realizes that they have this new version of Rainbow Raider. He calls her Rainbow Raider 2.0. And so Cisco at this point also reminisces about their past taking down all these villains and making all these cool pieces of tech that they've designed for like every mission that they've gone on. 
and so it's very nostalgic this whole episode and it's a whole lot of fun when we get to the fun stuff but okay flash and mecha vibe they go out on the streets they face off against this new rainbow raider 2.0 and so they fail because they think it's going to be easy cisco tries to use the old device however her powers don't work the same as the old rainbow raider and so cisco gets whammied and so cisco and barry hug it out on the street with cisco saying he loves barry and i just thought that was a brilliant scene and him turning around and being like that i was like oh my god this is gonna be so much fun and you knew it as soon as he turned around and so then we go over to star labs with cisco kind of dosed up on happiness and he's going crazy and barry and caitlin are like what is happening right here falls off the bed gets back up and he's like i'm fine and it's just so crazy like him going mad and so Chester and Cisco, they kind of have fun down in the basement as Chester tries to keep Cisco down there, as ordered by the rest of the team Flash. But also, at this point, Barry, who literally gets screwed over by Cisco so bad, who has implemented like a video game with like pixelated cats onto his suit, like in front of his eyes, and he crashes and he just so happens to land in the same spot that he was going for, but he is whammied by Rainbow Raider 2.0 and so Barry is also taken over and at this point you know like you're gonna get these two guys just like vibing off of each other and it's just gonna be fantastic and having a whole lot of fun and so it's at this point that the Flash does his biggest smile ever and breaks into a break dance and he goes nuts and so does the editing as you get like multiple split screens going from three to four to two like, it's going crazy, you got all these different angles of Barry, like, dancing, twisting on his head, break dancing. I mean, just going absolutely wild, and it was so much fun watching this. I'm sure you guys share the same sentiment. It's probably one of the most fun scenes I've seen in any of the Arrowverse shows in a long time, and definitely the most fun scene of this whole episode. Like, obviously, the ending was so much fun with what we're going to get to in a minute. However, I think this episode really cracked it down on like the perfect way to let Cisco leave because it really embodies his character and lets him be himself and just have fun, you know, it's great. It's great fun for us as well. And so, yeah, you get the split screen dancing and it's hilarious to see Grant do this. But anyway, so Cisco after this, after they're taken out by Chester and Chester's like, what up party people? He does this thing and he's able to take them out of it. And it's at this point that Cisco gets mad at Barry as they try and take down the new Rainbow Raider. And this is because he doesn't think that any of them actually care about him and him leaving. And so this is when Cisco reminisces. He looks back at old photos of OG Team Flash. So they come clean to him and they're gonna miss him so much. It's revealed. This is Barry and Caitlin. And so they say there wouldn't be Flash without Cisco Ramon. And Cisco in reply to this is like, we did build some pretty rad suits and yes absolutely right he did and they were fantastic and they're always going to be fantastic and i'm going to miss cisco you guys are definitely going to miss cisco as well but barry's right the flash wouldn't be what it is today as a show without cisco and i don't think barry would be himself as the flash without cisco because cisco has been there since day one along with caitlin and so Cisco reveals his fear of him still being in the team 30 years on. He also makes reference to what he saw, and he said he saw the next generation of heroes. Now, this is very interesting, and it caught my eye when this was said, because I was like, hmm, next generation of heroes. This means it's like a whole new team, and it confirms that there is a superhero team that operates out of Star Labs, at least in like one version of reality like if this version of reality ever did come true like in another timeline that means that there would be some sort of next generation of heroes which could mean like bart allen and the rest of his team flash maybe that is what cisco is referencing and so rainbow raider is going to literally make it rain with all the money and jewels that she's stolen it's revealed and so she's not like a proper criminal but she is like stealing stuff and she is going to cause chaos if she drops that down in the city. And so 
It's a little bit cringe with this one line where she's talking to herself, but like, it's forgivable. It's like one line, I'm loving the episode at this point. So I was like, hmm, it's fine. Who cares? Like, let's move on from that. So Allegra uses Nash's device to go up into the blimp and they're able to stop her. And also Barry's like, I'm going to recommend you for this job that she really wants because he knows about like her true intentions and he's able to use that for the better of Central City himself and also for her because she's not going to get hurt. She's not going to get taken down. And so Cisco stays behind on the blimp to stop it crashing. And Cisco is Dabom, as Caitlin says, as he saves the city and it was just fantastic seeing him succeed in such a big way of being a proper hero and obviously he's done that many times before but it's just really gratifying seeing it in his goodbye episode and so at this point Cisco passes on everything he has onto Chester who has a new workshop which he is super excited about and even misses like the party later on that we see because he's so excited and I think Chester is like the perfect replacement for Cisco. Obviously, Cisco is going to be sorely missed. And I think this episode just goes to prove like how much we're going to miss him because he is such a vital character to the show. Even if he hasn't been around that much over the last few seasons, he's still been here and he's still been around and we felt his presence, which is good enough by my books. Moving on, Cisco remembers his entire past, so all the important moments of his life are Team Flash, you see through flashbacks, and it's truly the end of an era, as, as Pa Cisco says, and it truly is the end of an era when you look at it. We're going to miss Cisco so much, he is such a vital part of the show, like I said, he's been here since episode 1, and I mean, he is going to come back this season for two episodes, which is super exciting. Obviously, this isn't like goodbye, but it's a goodbye for now, and it's very touching and quite emotional because we are fans of him and we don't want to see him go, but, you know, people have to move on. And so he touches the OG Flash suit, he says his final goodbyes to Star Labs, touch the top of Star Labs, just to leave his sort of last mark in the building, and so he leaves and Camilla at the same time is saying goodbye to Iris and Team Citizen. They take photos, Cecile also shows up, and it kind of sets up what happens at the end of the episode, so that's nice. However, going to Cisco, Barry, Kaylin, and Joe inside Barry's apartment in the loft, Joe says bye to Cisco, that is a great scene, and Cisco and everyone plays the game. Yes, they are dancing, they are singing, and Barry's jam comes on, and this is what he woke up to, what Cisco found on his Facebook page. It's such a fitting end to Cisco. It's so much fun. They sing and they dance to Poker Face, and it's just so brilliant. I absolutely loved it, and I was laughing so much. And seeing the actual cast do that, I think that's just fantastic. Like watching Grant Carlos sing their hearts out in a really funny way. What more could you ask for? So let's move on to the final thing. This is to do with Cecile. I'm a little bit confused about what's going on, however in Cecile's ending scene she's scared as she hears someone talk inside her mind, very similar to what Psyche was able to do, and so Cecile potentially sees like a version of herself in the mirror, but with a mask on and she says, I will find you. And this last line is like a little bit cringe, I don't know why they put that in, because it's pretty obvious just by looking at the mask, like something is going on, Cecile is up to something as was teased earlier in the episode by Allegra and this is going to come to fruition in her episode which is coming up very very soon and I don't know what this mask specifically references it looks like Kelly's mask from her new suit on Supergirl mixed with Psycho Pirate so could this potentially be Psycho Pirate I mean that would be more in line with the powers that Cecile is, you know, playing with, and Psycho Pirate will give her a good challenge. However, I think it's actually someone different, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be like a doppelganger situation, obviously she was in the mirror, that's why she saw herself with the mask on, or it could be a completely different person, but I don't think it's gonna be Psycho Pirate, I think it's gonna be someone else, but I'm not sure if I can give like a definitive guess right now, However, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment. That's it for today's video. Subscribe, turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any videos. 
Also click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.